Hey, what's up everybody? It is Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome to Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game six career mode episode number one. It is launch day. Welcome to March 9th, 2023, the first day that this game is officially released to the public. Of course, we've already had quite a bit of gameplay footage and other stuff in it. So if you haven't watched that already, be sure to go back and check that out. But I have not done a single career mode video yet. I wanted to wait till the game was out to kind of get that rolling along. So let's jump into it and see what the career mode in Supercross 6 is all about. So it looks like to start off, of course, just the same as last year, we got Futures, Rookie, Pro. Uh, kind of looks like basically the same layout as before. You have a journal, you have an academy, uh, and you have a skills tree and all this other stuff. But then it looks like once you get in a rookie season, it looks like there's some coach stuff, which of course, Jeremy McGrath is involved with. So it looks like it's going to be fun. Let's start off with futures, see if we got any cut scenes or anything like that. The futures chapter is the first opportunity to show what you're made of. At the a series of three Academy, races that will allow the teams allow and sponsors on the hunt for new talent to evaluate your skills. The better. All right, so it looks like McGrath just tells us a bunch of stuff right there. I don't know if uh, you guys sat through all that or not, but uh, I wanted to check out the career options real quick uh, just to see. So it looks like I want to do one shot just to start off, which is basically just the main events. Uh, race length, we don't need to be realistic. Let's just do, what is this? How long are main events for this one? 10 minute qualifying session, five minute plus one, that main event. Let's just do short, but AI difficulty will be realistic. So keeping it, on that higher echelon. And I also wanted to go through and customize my rider just real quick because I have some credits that I want to use to just actually show my ride off. Actually, a couple things here, number and sponsor. Oh, uh, it looks like, cause we don't have a sponsor yet. We can't add it to the side. And as you guys probably remember the front uh, or the number font is still the exact same. Anyway, I digress about that. I'm gonna update my rider real quick and then we'll jump back into the career mode. All right, we did a little bit of customizing here. Uh, just got some new Fox gear. They have the Bell Moto 10 in the game. So a couple of cool things like that and ran my credits all the way down to zero, just enough to be able to get a new livery on the bike. But uh, that's it. I have not upgraded anything on the machine. I'm going bone stock into this to try it out. And we're just gonna have a good time. So uh, we'll go ahead and do the first race and see what it's all about. All right, so here we go with our first Supercross Futures race. It looks like we are once again stuck on the pretty boring stockish tracks that they have in the game for us. And uh, as a reminder, I'm on realistic difficulty. So we're just gonna see what the AI actually feels like in this setting. But these stock tracks in the game are very much uh, similar to what we saw in the last game. I think it was actually the exact same like kind of stock Supercross Futures track which to me sucks because the real life Supercross features are now racing inside of the stadiums and they were doing so uh, last year. They were not doing like what they should have done with this is, you know, last year they raced at Anaheim two and uh, I think three or four others. Um, and the race that the Supercross features had would be in the daytime going into the night show. Now Supercross features is actually part of the night show when they have the Supercross features races. But I don't know, like personally, I think it would have just been better to include Supercross Futures as part of like the day program of Anaheim 2 and Arlington and the other events that they were involved at last year. I just think that that would have been a better option for this than just rehashing the same old tracks again. But I don't know. I'm not a game developer. I'm just talking about stuff at this point. So we're going to grind it out here and try to beat the field, which is looking rather easy thus far. But you're getting a sense of how easy the AI is and a sense of what the bike ride likes and how it feels and stuff like that. I mean, one thing I will say so far that I feel about this game that's maybe a little bit different than Supercross 5 is the bike feels a lot heavier right now in its stock form and without any of my rider upgrades. Like, I feel like I'm really struggling to, like, move around uh, and get the bike to turn into corners and stuff. So that'll be interesting to see how much that changes and how different that feels as we progress. And I know that that was a thing as well in the skill tree last year with Supercross 5, but... I feel like this one's more exaggerated. I really feel like the bike is very sluggish. The turning is really, really sluggish as well. And uh, that just feels completely different to me. So maybe I'm wrong, but definitely feels different to me. All right, let's try to run down the field and maybe we can lap everybody before this is over. It's looking pretty promising to be able to do that. Catching up to the back of the field. We got ourselves D Blazer and S Christensen and J Johnson and R Moore. We're just blown right by these guys, no problem. And uh, so far they're not being too bad of lappers. They're not exactly moving out of the way, but they're also not super in my way. So maybe the AI is better this time around. Maybe, well, not in terms of skill set, but maybe they're better 
uh, overall in terms of reacting to you, or maybe they still just fly across the track and hit you. We're weaving through these guys pretty good, though, so can't complain too much about it. They are definitely terrible when it comes to reading lines, though. Like, they're just going over berms and really just making a mess of it. Another thing I will say about this game, because I've had it asked a couple times to me, no, Hayden Deegan is not in this game. That is because this game is based on 2022 Monster Energy Supercross in real life, which Hayden Deegan did not partake in any of it, including Supercross Futures. Uh, he is obviously racing as a professional now in 2023. But, uh, yeah, Deegan not in it because he was not a athlete that competed in any Supercross discipline, aside from Minios, I guess, in 2022. So, no, Hayden Deegan is not in the game. Right, I'm going to do a little little cheeky cheater move right here and let the time expire so I don't have to do a whole extra lap around the stadium. Three, two, one, zero, and two laps to the end. Bam, final lap. Now we can finish this thing off. All right, checkered flag is out. Look at this. We won Supercross Futures, and it was rather easy in the end as we do a salute to the crowd. Incredible, race in the main event. incredible says Daniel Blair. It's rather incredible. All right, so we pre prestiged up to level 14. We absolutely worked the field, and look at that, we're on top of the podium. So Supercross Futures seems pretty simple in this game, whereas I remember in Supercross 5, they're actually pretty darn hard. All right, career management, what do we got? Mm, just championship rankings? Is that what we have here? Oh, no, new challenges in the journal or something like that. Did I get something? Oh, yeah, credits obtained. Whew. Nailed it. Uh, do we have anything? Yeah, we have some skills points available. So we have two skill points. So we'll upgrade our cornering. And now we'll see if this affects it at all. Um, so yeah, let's do race two. Well, I'm still on a stock bike here and haven't changed anything about the bike or anything like that. And we'll see if maybe the second race of Supercross Futures is a little bit harder. Looks like the start, they're a little bit more feisty going into the first corner. But we're going to quickly slice and dice through them. And... Uh, yeah, you know what? It feels a little bit lazy. I'm just going to call it what it is. The fact that they're using the exact same Supercross Futures tracks again, because this is, again, the second track, uh, and that's just dumb. Like, come on. It, it really would be better to just use the real tracks for Supercross Futures. Like, I, I don't... I don't know. Just use the real tracks. <laughs> we don't need these, like, lowbrow, easier skill set tracks if they're just going to be the same track every single year, in my opinion. But... I digress. So far, AI looks a little tougher on this track, perhaps. And I will say that my cornering abilities don't feel drastically improved, but maybe it doesn't feel as heavy in the turns. Eh, I don't know. Still feels pretty similar to me. I remember this one, you would just launch out into the sand, land right there, double into the corner. With this cheeky little inside berm that they got. That's the only thing that's different. They added those little berms on this track now. I don't think those had... Uh, these tracks had berms last year, but I also would not remember because I only played these tracks once and never played them again because they're not the funnest tracks. And I can tell you that even the ground physics and all that stuff like that, the ruts are doing almost nothing except the pre-made ruts, obviously. Uh, but one thing that I feel like I'm noticing a little bit more so far is the force feedback in the game. Like I'm getting a lot more rumbles and stuff like that, which is something I'm sure you could just tune out anyway, but... Uh, that is something that stock-wise in these games is really pretty light in the past, so I wonder if it's just uh, something they focused on working a little bit more effort into this time. Again, just trying to find a couple things that I like about it, because so far I'm just feeling like this is basically a repeat of the same video I did at the start of Supercross 5 <laughs> with career mode, which is a little sad and disappointing. Dang, absolutely just put a burner of a 39.7 down. Sometimes it's nice to just like get out in the lead and try to beat your lap time, but then it just feels like a time trial. So, yeah, I wish uh, competition was a little bit more stacked. But, hey, maybe once we get to 250 Supercross, it'll feel a little bit more stacked. All right, can I do it again? Can I lap through the entire field? Going to give me a little bit more of a challenge this time. I feel like I haven't been pulling away as easily. Well, I mean, easily is subjective here because I have rather easily pulled away. But I just went down. Whoa, just had a crash. I wonder if I'll be injured after this now. I remember from the past couple games. I think this even goes back to Supercross 4. If you fell off, you would get an injury that you could just pay to be fixed instead of just deal with it, which is what most of the pro Supercross riders deal with, of course. Some little nagging injury of some kind. And it looks like, to me, 
the most disappointing part about this thing that I'm, I'm looking at here is that the AI is just following the stupid, like, middle line. Like, go closer to the tough blocks. Go to the far outside berms. Like, I don't get it. I've had this argument with some people in my comments before of, like, well, the AI is just, you know, following the main line. And I'm like, that's not the main line. The middle of the track is not the main line where they're barely hitting ruts because they're just in the dead center of the track. Like, that, they have to hit berms in real life to go fast. And they have to... Uh, build momentum and apex corners certain ways and apparently not go backwards on the track. <laughs> like, the AI has just got a stupid mind of its own that doesn't really seem to gel with the way that the game should be played. But uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll have some adaptive AI eventually and then they'll be able to learn the track based off of the cool things that you're doing around the track. All right, final lap. Are we going to lap the whole field? Got to catch up to Kelvin or Melvin McCormick. That's my own name. And here he is. Lap him. Let's jump over the top of him. Throw a huge whip. Oh, yard sale. <laughs> I don't think we're going to lap the field now because this guy's going to be right here. Oh, we might still have a shot. Down by the mechanics area. Just out break him into this corner. Oh, we got him. Lap the whole field again in futures. What it do? Oh, whip her tail off the finish line to boot. Incredible race in the main event. Here are the final results. All right, we proceed twice up to level 16. We're just absolutely crushing Supercross futures. All right, career management. Let me guess. There's more stuff in the journal. Or I should just go to complete. Oh, nothing's fully completed, so I gotta. I got to see what I did. Oh, I did laps without rewind and laps without falls and miles covered. Just cruising right along. And uh, skills wise, we have three more skill points. So we'll add these to our bike control skills. And we're, we're leveling up. And look at that. The journal highlights again because I, I have now five abilities unlocked. We are just... Laying it all out. All right, final race of the futures. Let's get it. All right, final race of futures. Still on the stock machine. Still riding a track that is in a year old game with Supercross 5. And this time the AI is looking a little bit froggier. If I remember correctly from the futures last year, uh, this track was pretty tough. Like the AI definitely gave it to you on some occasions. Uh, but so far, looking pretty simple. And I promise I'm on realistic AI. Like, I don't know. I'm playing on PC, so if any of you people watching that are, might have the game on PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, I don't know if the AI glitch that happened last year is back again, where the AI were like super OP, but if they are, I am playing on PC, and the PC AI seem to be a little bit easy. But again, it is future, so like I'm trying not to weigh too heavily on it because the pros should be the more challenging AI, and so if you work through futures super easily maybe it's not a big deal but i don't know maybe i should expect a little bit less out of the futures then and it should just be easy like this all right let's see if we can catch back up to the tail end of the ai field again and pass them all again and lap the whole field again it's looking like it's been a little bit too easy to do that <laughs> i mean to be fair also these tracks are relatively short so Maybe, just maybe, it's because of the short tracks that it's also causing a bit of a, an issue with how easy they are. But then the same exact track last year in Supercross 5, the AI was really difficult at the start. Like, it gave me some hope that the AI would be super challenging. And then they ended up just being kind of annoying. Like, they're challenging, but then because they didn't follow realistic lines, they're just more or less in the way the whole time. This time... It seems like they're maybe a little bit better with the lines in some areas of the track, but then they're slower. So, I don't know. There's got to be a middle ground somewhere where you, you can make fast AI that takes the same lines that a real-life rider would take and not just go to the far, far inside in every corner like a KTM Juniors rider. All right, did we just lap the whole field? I think we did. We have now lapped the whole field again. And we still have a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock, so we still even have time to kill despite lapping the whole field. All right, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to slow down, and I'm going to let time expire so that I can just do one less lap of racing. 
10 seconds. Oh, can we make it? Oh, just struggling through the whoops, hitting every single one and breaking it all the way through. Two seconds, one, zero. Time expired, white flag is out. All right, let's finish this thing off. Gonna be the future's champion, man. We almost could have double lapped the field there too if I really was just gonna push all the way through, but I figured, eh, why not? Just wait up, finish it off, make it simple. All right, final straightaway. We're about to be done with Supercross Futures. And we got it. Another dub. Three for three. Salute the crowd. Love you people out there. No holds barred. Let's see the, final the future of, of Supercross. Dominated it. Pretty easy in the end, honestly. Supercross Futures in this game. Not challenging, to say the least. All right, so what happens next? I just kind of want to wrap this video up by seeing, like, what's the next thing? Final placing, you've completed Futures Chapter, you can now access the Rookie Chapter. And we unlocked all of this stuff, which is the Yellow Dragon outfit, which is pretty much the exact same as the game before. And now we can move on to Rookie, which is nine races of East, or 10 uh, races, excuse me, of West. I'm a West guy, I live on the West Coast, so I'm gonna race West. Welcome and then to your first market window. Now we have a market window open, so we have contract offers, so we can ride for uh, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, Tedder, or Rockstar Husqvarna, or you could request a contract with any of those teams, and I cannot renew a contract, and I cannot choose my own sponsor. Interesting, so I have to, oh no, there is a sponsor window here. Okay, so we could choose between Scott, Dunlop, Oakley, basically that's it. I think team-wise, I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Let's pick out Monster Energy Kawasaki, and sign on the dotted line. Boom, contract signed. That's pretty cool. Like you get to start your pro career with like a high level team. Supercross Park is just awesome. Oh, so we'll get into the Supercross Park and rider shape and all that other stuff because now I get to look at, it shows me how everything is uh, on my rider and how I'm feeling apparently. Um, interesting. And then our career management, obviously we're going to have a rivalry and all that stuff, but we'll get to that in future episodes. So anyway, this has been episode one of Career Mode and Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game six, going through the futures. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As always, appreciate you guys stopping by and watching another video here on Star Your Systems. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.